name is Perry Chen. I'm a 13-year-old animator and film critic. I write for my own website, perryscreenies.com, as well as Amazing Kids, uh, Animation World Network, and many other uh, media outlets. Great. Well, glad to meet you. Sounds like you've got a busy life. Yeah. <laughs> I've read up on your bio, and I saw a lot of the work of it including that your TEDx talk, which was really inspiring. Uh, all of the photos and the stuff, you, uh, all the things you talked about, such as uh, talking about how nature makes us all connected, yeah. it uh, makes you feel really introspective and inspired. you feel that way when you go out to nature? Yeah. Why? I guess because you're a part of it. And you feel it like in your heart. Don't you? I think what's great is if you're a scientist and an artist and an animator, it's easy to connect with nature because beauty teaches us that everything's connected. You see it visually, you can also feel it emotionally. And when you look at science, you look at the structure of all these like atoms and molecules, and you realize that those patterns on the molecular level are the same as like what you see out in deep space, right? And so those physics of the universe is everywhere, and therefore it's easy to really understand that everything is connected. So Louie, I also want to share with you a tiny bit of information. I was also a TEDx speaker at uh, 2010 at Redmond. Great. What did you talk about? Um, my title for my talk was uh, For the Love of Food. Wow. And uh, so I'd like to ask you a few questions uh, about this film as well as your work. Okay. So first of all, I want to ask you, uh, how do you have the patience to continue shooting 24-7 <laughs> for uh, 30 years? Well, I get inspired every time I see the results. And that gives me the energy and the motivation to keep doing it because I never get tired of it. I'm sure you feel the same way with animation. If you're doing things one frame at a time and it's getting rendered and you see it being played back, that joy enables you to keep on working, right? So, uh, were you self-taught in photography or did you learn from someone? That's mostly self-taught. I learned the basics of photography you know, in a very simple class, but filmmaking, time lapse, and slow motion, altered speeds, and photography was something I developed on my own. I think once you learn the basic skills, you need to kind of just branch out and develop your own skills and develop your own voice and your own style and, and figure out the stories you want to tell. So, how did you get interested in Well, I guess um, when I went to UCLA, it was easier than doing uh, term papers and written reports. I think I'm more visual. And when I discovered photography, I realized I had a gift for it. And I was able to do it really well. And that just continued to expand. And then with filmmaking, you really want to reach a broad audience. And you know that you can do that with films almost better than any other medium. And so there's a lot I want to do to make the world a better place. And I think filmmaking is the perfect vehicle for that. So how is it that you manage to capture and, uh, first of all, see things in everyday life that most people uh, just overlook? Well, when you start playing with the camera, and you can understand it because you shoot one frame at a time, you're able to manipulate time. And when you realize you can manipulate time, you realize that the time that we experience every day is only one narrow point of view, right? 24 frames per second is one point of view, correct? And then when you realize you can stretch time or compress time, then it inspires you to show those other forms of reality. We dream, right? We sometimes imagine things. And so with, with my camera, I'm able to create those kind of altered realities that I think open up your mind to bigger possibilities. So, Lee, 
I wanted to ask you, what do you think is uh, uh, your favorite thing to photograph? I saw you enjoy photographing animals in slow-mo, as well as flowers. Right. Wow, I would say anything in nature that gives you that kind of aha moment, that sense of wonder, uh -huh. especially if it's really ordinary, because you go, God, I never realized a bee could do that, or a butterfly, or that a flower could move. It's looking at the ordinary and seeing the extraordinary. That's what really inspires me. So you would say that's your inspiration? Absolutely. Yeah, I felt really inspired when I saw uh, how the bees, when they get the pollen, the pollen like explodes everywhere. Yeah. And I never really thought about it because it's so small. Exactly, and with the way the pollen comes out, a lot of times with the bumblebee, it's a vibration. It'll kind of hang on tight and vibrate your wings at like 400 cycles per second, which creates the vibration that makes the pollen come out. And that's really amazing, because you know what you're actually looking at? You're looking at the intersection between the animal world and the plant world. And that's really a magical moment. So, uh what would uh, your advice be for filmmakers who want to do what you do? I would say develop your own voice. I mean, learn your basic skills. But because of digital technology, things are moving really quickly. So you can't just depend on the technique of knowing what you're doing. You need to learn that technique, and then you need to grow. And, and develop your own style, and develop your own message for what you want to communicate to. That's some great advice. I see uh, you're a really uh, gifted filmmaker. You have a talent to see things that most people in this age, uh, in this day and age, have uh, completely forgotten. And I really applaud you for that. Well, I applaud you for being a young explorer who's going to go on your own journey and shoot great stuff and tell great stories. So keep up the great work.